and hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another episode of Funky Monkey at the Movies! With me as ever is my nameless producer! Hello! And tonight... It's not actually December, and it's not actually the last of the year, but it is Star Wars time again, as we've just been to see Solo, a Star Wars story. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, let me just start off by stating that this movie does what X-Men Origins Wolverine could not do. It told an interesting and uh, compelling tale about Han Solo. And it's an origin story that is actually compelling and riveting. Although, I'll be honest, the first few minutes, half hour, they do rather put young Han through the ringer in all of his uh, the trials and tribulations to get to a point where he's away from danger and people shouting at him who are abusing him. I wasn't convinced by the origins of his last name because, like, later on in the film it refers to knowing that his dad was working in the shipyard building the ships so he must have known something about his dad so that whole yeah we'll just give him a fake surname and when he signs up to the imperial training imperial academy yeah we should know we've been through enough video games i mean there was kind of a big jump from that part to three years later so we don't get to see any kind of hand at the imperial training academy I think that all we really need to know was that he was kicked out for having a brain. Which tells me all I need to know. They didn't really explain the life debt thing very well, either, I don't think. Between Chewie and Han. Chewie was always supposed to have been uh, life debted to Han for saving his life. That was why you were supposed to be with him. Uh, I suppose you, you got the bit where he kind of saves him by pulling him back onto that train. <laughs> Well, I would have thought that they would have made more of Chewie saying, Oh, I owe you my life debt now. Oh, well. I didn't like the other Wookiees either. They didn't look quite right. They looked more like ape men than Wookiees. Uh, well, different tribes, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? I mean, I don't want to bring up the Star Wars Holiday Special, because that isn't even canon. But there is something that we did see that is. Massive spoiler alert. Darth frickin' Maul! Yeah, unfortunately somebody sent me a message about 20 minutes before the start of the film, so I knew Darth Maul was going to be in it. Somewhere. Okay, that just blew my mind. I mean, I know, I heard that um, the later episodes, later seasons of Star Wars The Clone Wars featured Darth Maul in some capacity, but... Yeah, he's back. He's got robot legs. Somehow he managed to survive being sliced in half and losing his intestines and things like that. Well, if Deadpool can do it... Deadpool's got regenerative abilities. Yeah, healing factor, so... Yeah. Oh, well. I'm not sure if I was entirely convinced by that guy playing Han as Han, but he wasn't bad, I suppose. Yeah. I thought Orlando was kind of... Probably spot on. He's like what I imagine Lando would have been like when he was young. And I quite liked his droid too. I thought the droid was quite funny. L3. You know, I'm sure that I recognised her voice. But I can't for the life of me place it. Yeah, you'll have to do a search to find out who it is later on. Yeah, I'll probably look it up on IMDB or something. Yeah. What's the face was quite good, Amelia Clark. Paul Bettany was quite good in it as well. Now, Paul Bettany's getting quite the career resurrection of late. What with uh, his turn in the Marvel movies as the Vision. And now he's a gangster. Of course, truth be told, I seem to remember he's played a British gangster in uh, some low budget indie flicks in around about the late 90s, early 2000s, but you know. Apparently. The robot, um, the droid, was Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Oh! Never heard of her. No, me neither. Sounding more like Dawn French or one of those. Oh well. And when I'd seen trailers and things, I thought, what have you done to my Millennium Falcon? 
It just looks completely wrong. Well, not completely wrong. That was an absolute fake out. You know, and so it turned out that they had a escape pod fitted. So I'm glad that they ditched the escape pod later on. And it's like, there's my proper Millennium pod. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention was, um, especially in the first part of the film, they seem to be overselling that thing with the little dicey medallion thing, which, as far as I'm aware, I never noticed at all in any Star Wars film until um, The Last Jedi. And then they went through, look, here's the dice thing, here it is, here it is, the dice, look, look, put the camera on the dice, here it is. Like they were just trying to legitimise that thing which we'd never seen before in any film. And then it's like, now it's meaning to. Well, you can always go back and take a look at the Blu-rays of the original trilogy. Yep. And probably, if they weren't actually there when they were filmed, they might have digitally inserted it for the next time they release it, which is probably going to be on 4K. Yep. I mean, we got to see some iconic moments, I suppose, like uh, him meeting Lando, him winning the Falcon at the end, even though technically he won it earlier on, but Lando was cheating. Him meeting Chewbacca, him doing the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Actually, I think that that is this movie's a genius moment. That they actually explained what the Kessel Run is, why it takes 20 parsecs, how he managed to do it in less than 12. They'd done it before there was a explanation of the Kessel Run. A Kessel Run before that was some kind of smuggling moving freight competition, yeah. smuggling competition. But this time, this time it was actually more of a shortcut through uncharted territory. It was actually quite the heroic moment. Yeah, they had that Cthulhu thing trying to eat them. Now, in Star Wars films, I'm never sure about, like, well-known faces being in them. I mean, like, Amelia Clark was okay in it, and Woody Harrelson plays a good part, but you just kind of look at him and go, it's Woody Harrelson, and you have problems suspending disbelief in him being someone else. And Sandy Newton as well. Sandy Newton I could buy. Yeah. But well, come on, Woody Harrelson had the most un-Star Wars name of them all. Tobias Beckett. Any human could have that name. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. That's a human name, such as you might find in this galaxy. Yeah, there's not that many people called Tobias nowadays, though. The last Tobias I'd heard of was it was the baddie in Black Lightning. Yeah. Tobias something, I think. I didn't, I didn't quite get, like, what was supposed to be so amazing about that Marauder. It's like... They took the helmet off and like there was this big long shot of her and I was like, are we supposed to know who she is or something? Or are we just supposed to go, oh my god, it's secretly a woman? It's an establishing shot. It just establishes that this character is not some kind of big burly marauder, but it's actually a rebel. Personally, it still doesn't uh, explain Mon Mothma, unless that was her, but... No, it couldn't be, because um, Mon Mothma's older than Han Solo, I think. Plus, I guess it doesn't really say when the film's set, either. I mean, obviously, it's set after the Empire, the founding of the Empire kind of thing. Yeah, it didn't say, like, when or anything, because I suppose he was still quite young, Han Solo, there. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose it was pre-meeting Jabba the Hutt, too, so he had to go and meet Jabba and... Do some smuggling for Jabba. And then mess up a job, which left him in the hole. Before meeting our heroes from Star Wars. Yeah, and then Star Wars. Yep. So, you know, it doesn't tell you the whole story, but, you know, sequel hook. Yeah. But, yeah, it was quite exciting and things. I mean, maybe I'm getting too old for some of these films that you just know they're going to win in the end, but it was still quite exciting and tense and things like that. And I suppose there were a few uh, twists and turns in the plot and how the characters were, and there was kind of hashtag handshot first near the end with Woody Harrelson. Yeah, well he would. We can't show him being all good guy. Yeah, 
I mean, I guess that was one of the establishing things of the plot as well, the whole, he thinks he's an outlaw and a criminal and whatnot, and everyone's telling him he's the, um, the good guy. So what gets him killed at the end of uh, Force Awakens? Music but, was quite good as well. Yeah. As you'd expect. I mean, well, obviously. it did uh, riff. Well, it did play on Williams. It was very much based on a lot of the musics from four and five, Hope and Empire. Yeah. Also, yeah. So I mean, yeah, it, it did have lots of callbacks to the original Star Wars music, which is always a plus, I think. Got to get the nostalgia. Yep. Well. It was a rip-roaring adventure, with plenty of twists and turns. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be, like, plenty of people out there who probably didn't like it, but I thought it was quite good, and I was quite surprised it was directed by Ron Howard. I didn't know he was directing it. Oh, he's been directing movies for a while now. Oh, no, he's been directing movies, yes. I but know. you didn't know that he was directing this one? No. It wasn't a thing that I had heard. Well, now that you can say that you've seen a Ron Howard movie. Yeah. He also I've... did a documentary about the Beatles at some point. I'm sure I've seen a couple now, but I can't remember, like, what ones. But, yeah. All right. If uh... I have, that's got to be the best one I've seen. <laughs> because Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, final thoughts and rating, then. I think you generally hit the right notes. It had lots of nostalgia and added lots of bits that we'd heard from the films before, you know, so I got to see how they happened. Uh, music was good, acting was okay, I was mostly convinced by the casting, apart from maybe not Han, even though he was alright. I think he would have been better kind of not as Han Solo, but as somebody else, kind of thing. It was hard to replace Harrison Ford as Han Solo. It is. It really is. I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. Oh, an 8? Yeah, why not? Controversially, I'm not going to agree. Da, da, da. But yeah, it was a good movie. The young Han Solo, again, nobody could be a replacement for Harrison Ford, but I think that this guy did pull it off with uh, a plum and gusto, and other words I'm probably using quite, quite wrongly. Amelia Clark as the girlfriend, well, she ended up in a descent to evil, and I don't know where she ended up, but she ended up somewhere. The cast was good, music was lovely, John Powell did a good score. 7 out of 10 from me. Okay, so this has been Funky Monkey and His Nameless Producer. All of the uh, accompanying links are below in the description. Thank you for listening and we'll... Give him money. Yeah, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye. Oh, and also look out for the Bohemian Rhapsody review coming soon.